Um, a lot of our time today is going to be spent in small groups, so in a group from your church, thinking through some questions really around the topics that we're going to look at today. And the main thing, or the key themes if you like for today, are about building trust and communicating well. Those are the two things that we're going to take some time to look at, and then I'm going to give you some time in your congregational groups just to think about how you're building trust and how you can do that better and about how you can communicate well. And I want to share about those things because those things are incredibly important all of the time, but even more important just now. The things that are important seem to be accentuated at the moment. And building trust and communicating well are absolutely key things for us at the moment. And those two things in many ways are intertwined. So it's not just that building trust is there, but communicating well is part of building trust. And as we, we cannot do that with one without the other. Those two things are intertwined. So first of all, just a bit about building trust. And some quotes from some other folk who've been looking at this. Uh, Andy Crouch, Kurt Karlhacker and Dave Blanchard have written an article really around living beyond the blizzard, saying we thought this was a blizzard, but actually it's turned out to be more than that. And what they say is that trust is the greatest resource in human society. Without trust, we relate as competitors and in a mindset of scarcity. With trust, we discover creative pathways that unlock abundance we could never have found on our own. So if I live in an environment where there is no trust, then I end up looking out for myself. We relate as competitors. I've got to look out for my well-being because no one else is going to do it. If we trust each other, then we live in a different context. We discover, as they say, creative pathways that unlock abundance. As I look out for you and you look out for me, everything changes because we trust each other. And suddenly there is something rich in that moment. So what they actually say is all worthwhile human work in life takes place under an umbrella of trust, or to use the stronger biblical word, covenant. The shelter of mutual respect and love that forms a kind of canopy, protecting us from the wild and dangerous world, making room for great acts of sacrifice and beauty. So it's not just for just now, it's for all time, but there's something important just now. And we, we recognise their word, use of the word covenant in that and how important that is in terms of faith. The shelter of mutual respect and love that forms a canopy. And it's true also in our relationship with God. So we were looking last night uh, in a study it's some stuff that Max Lucado was teaching about God as the shepherd and us as the sheep. And at the end of the time, we listened to that song, The Lord's My Shepherd. And there's that line, of course, that comes. And I will trust in you alone. Trust is absolutely key in our relationship with God and also in our relationships with one another. And living in that covenant relationship with God, we're also invited into a covenant relationship, in a sense, with one another, to places where we can trust. And what they say is, in order to find our way to the new playbook for the mission and people that have been entrusted to us, we will need to act at every moment in ways that build on and build up trust. In this moment and in this situation, Trust is absolutely key, and we need to make sure that what we're doing is actually building trust, building on the trust that's already there and building up more trust because it's that that we need in this moment. Now, one of the folk that we've used in Path of Renewal is a guy called Todd Balsinger. He's based in Fuller Seminary in the States. He's just written an, an article on adaptive leadership in highly anxious times, and he talks about his his work on adaptive leadership. And he says, in adaptive leadership moments, there is only one fuel, trust. Every difficult, unexpected or painful decision is going to require you to use trust. So if there's no trust, 
you really can't move through this time. Trust is incredibly important. And the question is how we build that trust. Now, Todd suggests that trust is a product of two things, competence and congruence. So we trust those who've got a level of competence. They, they've somehow got a handle on things. They, they know how to do things. Now, in the context that we're in at the moment, folk don't expect us to know everything, but they do expect a level of competence. And the congruence is that we actually do what we say. That actually there's an alignment between our words and our actions. And trust is built when those two things are around, competence and congruence. And Todd suggests at the moment we need three things. So for now, you need to demonstrate competence at the most important things you need to do. So the way that you keep people in touch, the way that you perhaps do stuff online, there needs to be a level of competence there. Secondly, he suggests that you need to be as caring and present to people as possible. When we remove ourselves from folk and when they cannot contact us, the levels of trust are diminished. We need to be as caring and present to people as possible. And thirdly, he says, we need to speak clearly and regularly to our people about holding to your core values and how any new things are aligned with them, not undermining them. In other words, what we are doing just now during this lockdown period needs to tie in with our core values. We're not undermining who we are as God's people, but actually are saying, how do we as God's people act differently in this time, but as God's people keeping the values that we have? We've not given up the values, but we're building on the values that are important for us. We need to make clear to folk that that's what's around. And we need to do that during this lockdown period as well as at other times. So I want to suggest to you just three or four things. And these hopefully are very practical things. So the first thing simply is start with the things that you are confident about doing well. Things that you're confident about doing well. So if it's actually been about phoning folk and keeping in touch with folk, and that's what you're confident in doing, that's where you start. If it's doing stuff online and doing a full stream service, then that's where you start. But you should start with the things that you're confident about doing well. And I have the sense that that's actually what people have been doing and it's the right place to start. Start with the things that you're confident in. And that way folks see that you're good at those things because they're the things that you're confident in. Secondly, though, you do need to build competence in new areas. Uh, and that's been true for all of us. So I've had to learn to use Zoom in a way that I'd never used it before. I've had to build competence in new areas. I've had to learn how to edit videos. All kinds of things that I've had to build competence in, and we need to be willing to do that. But what I would say is that what you need to do is try them out on a few people first. So rather than go public with something that you're not that sure about, that you're developing competence in, try it out on a few people that know you well and whose trust is not going to be undermined when actually you're going, I'm not quite sure what to do here. Try them out on a few people first to build your confidence in them. And in that, draw on the skills and gifts of others. There will be folk who can do things just now better than you can. Draw on their skills and gifts that it's not just about you developing competence, but about the whole church building competence in new areas. So start with what you're confident in, and then you need to build competence in new areas. And all of us need to do that. And I think all of us are working on that in different ways. Thirdly, we need to be available for people to speak to and communicate with, whether it's by email, whether we're doing Zoom calls, whether we're making phone calls, we need to be available for and with people. If we withdraw from people, then their trust in us will be diminished. That availability needs to be there. Now, I'm not suggesting that needs to be 24-7, but we need to be opening up those lines of communication. And that's what we're going to look at in the second part. It does build up trust as we are available for folk to speak to or communicate with. And finally, 
follow through on what you say you will do. It's that congruence thing. We're not just to be competent, we're to be, that congruence needs to be seen. So when we say we will do something, it's even more important now than ever that we do that. As we say we will do things and do them, that builds up trust. Now, that means that you may make fewer promises. That there may be times when you actually have to say to people, I'm sorry, I really can't do that just now. Follow through on what you say you will do means sometimes you have to say you will do less in order that you can see it through. So those are the four things that I think we need to be working on just now. And I think we are, all of us, working through these things. But I want to give you a bit of time just now, just in your church groups, to look at these four areas and to ask that final question at the bottom. Which of these are you doing well? And we need to recognise, actually, the distance we've travelled just in a few weeks. Which of these are you doing well and working on? And which need a bit more work just now? So start with things you're confident, build competence, be available for folk to speak to you, follow through on what you will say you will do. Which of these are you doing well? Which need a bit more work just now?